morning and welcome to our monthly video podcast where we talk about upcoming video games and things that are happening in nerd culture. I am joined here by my two co-hosts. This is... Charlie. And... Arturo. And you guys know me, I'm Penny. So let's go ahead and get started with, since we were out July, we really didn't get to... Monthly podcast, but not July. We didn't get to talk about Sans our G3 uh-huh. predictions and impressions and stuff like that. So do you guys have any honorable mentions you'd like to talk about? Uh, the only thing that really caught my attention heavily was Anthem. Uh, Bioware's attempt at being a destiny killer. It looks like so much fun. Flying around. The, the, the video that they yeah. played, it's just like flying around. Kind of have like water. little gold wing things. Yeah. I mean, they so haven't cool. revealed much, but uh, I'm interested. Now, you know? Is it an Xbox exclusive? Or is it not? Because I don't were, think it's a platform exclusive. No? I don't think it was so. kind of going backwards and forwards if it was an Xbox exclusive or not. I don't know. I didn't pay attention enough. I just know it looks cool. Because if it is, I'm never going to play it. Me neither. <laughs> no we don't like time. Microsoft here. Mm-mm. I do. What caught my attention for sure was uh, two Metroid games. So they're finally doing a Metroid Prime again, the third one. And then the one that is uh, Samus Return on uh, the 3DS. That's, is that a remake of two? Is the remake. The Game Boy original? Yes. So is the sprite going to take up like the whole screen on this one? <laughs> like no. it did on the original Game Boy where it's like, yeah. I can't shoot something four meters away. It's off screen. <laughs> it's off screen. Sorry. No, it's actually got some new mechanics on, oh, the, cool. on the game as well. So she can actually like melee attack now too. So it's interesting to see what they're going to do with it. And then, so she lost that ability in the newer. <laughs> right, and now, and now she, she got out of bunch shit. Well, and now um, also they have a Pokemon game coming out for the Switch, which is still to be determined. Mm. So they just said they're working on one. Right, they just okay. said they're working on one. They haven't said anything about it, what its title, what it's supposed to be. Everybody's it's, too busy catching their, their Moltresses or whatever the hell that is in Pokemon Go. Oh, yeah, because now they have a. Legendary. Yeah, let's talk about what a raging success Pokemon Go yeah. Fest was. <laughs> that was so sad. Fix the game! <laughs> Fix the game! I, well, yeah. But uh, I mean, poor Niantic, poor Niantic. Poor Niantic. It has had its success and it has had its major blunders. So. Uh, well, it doesn't get much more major than this. Well, I yeah. appreciate them doing it because Pokemon Go was revolutionary. It was. It was. was, it? It, was. it was Ingram with Pokemon. It, it was, and it still, <laughs> it still is nice to go out to public pace places and you find people playing the game and oh, can you, you fight of, can you fight other players yet you kind of feel like you're in no. the world can you trade it's in the works apparently right oh, for over a it is, it's a global <laughs> thing it takes a while look they've got over 100 million registered users at this point nobody is questioning the success i think everybody is questioning where the actual the long, content yeah. is right and i know the diehards bless them like i do not have the dedication for that and i'm not knocking anybody who plays it uh it definitely has captured the hearts of a lot of people however if we are going to Logically, talk about Pokemon Go Fest. Probably the biggest blunder in gaming anything over the past five, ten years. I mean, it, it was, was terrible from start to finish, and there are now class action lawsuits being filed on top of the refunds and everything else. Right. So, Niantic, good luck. <laughs> keep on trucking, whatever right. we say down here. Uh, but players, you know, keep on playing, but... Uh, well, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll yeah. keep an eye on it. I know there's still tons of people to play it regardless. Yeah. So I'm just happy they decided to release the legendaries <laughs> right. regardless of what happens. Yeah. Sorry, anyway, we, we got sidetracked. Back on topic. Yeah. <laughs> also, finally, more footage about Kingdom Hearts 3 was mm-hmm. released. The whole Toy Story world, and it looks so freaking good. You know, for years we've been saying, oh, I can't... video This video game looks just like this you know, animated movie. And finally, in this Kingdom yeah, Hearts like, clip, it actually looks like Toy Story, if not exactly better. Exactly the same. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm watching a movie. And it's an original story where right. everything else in Kingdom Hearts has been like, okay, well, we're going to just revisit this chapter of the actual story that we all saw in the Disney movie. But in the right. Toy Story universe, apparently it's going to be a completely original story, which that makes me excited. And I'm not really a Kingdom Hearts fan because it always covered rehash stories. But this being original, I'm paying attention now. What platform right. is it going to be? Um, so far, yeah, definitely the PlayStation. PlayStation. I mean, it's played, usually they're talking PlayStation, about right? Xbox as okay. well. And there was mention. I'd be shocked if it didn't come to Switch. I'd be shocked if it didn't come to Switch. Yeah, Yeah, me too. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to play Kingdom Hearts on the go? I want to. (laughs) (laughs) Who doesn't want to play anything on the go? Yeah, Switch still. I I don't know. If I was still living in New York on the subway, sure. But I don't know if you want me playing it going down 45 South. Well, (laughs) yeah. True. (laughs) Stop driving cars, sir. But I will say, uh, it is nice at the meetups for people to bring their Switches. Which I guess I can tie into our next topic, (laughs) which are the new Nintendo Switch games that we have coming out. We got to try out ARMS, and I know a ton of people right now are playing the new Splatoon 2. So uh, at, at our meetup, we did a little ARMS mini Team tournament. Team Mayo. And we did a LAN <laughs> connection. Team Ketchup. <laughs> so ARMS is fun. Multiple characters, different abilities, stuff like that. Yes. Have, have you guys tried it? Oh, I, I love you? I love ARMS. I, I haven't played it, but I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. I mean, I think Nintendo might have... If, if they balance it correctly and actually support the game, I, I truly think Nintendo might have their next eSport, which hasn't yeah. happened since Smash Brothers. Like, 
it, I, it's got that kind of potential. The game is legit. Yeah, it's I legit. appreciated the controllers and the sensitivity. That's what I still think is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's the movements mm -hmm. and actually the fist fighting actually really ties in How's really, really well. Like this. One and two. Are you jazzercising or playing yeah. arms? <laughs> it's like that lady. Well, actually, when I play Jeffrey, it's more like, ah. <laughs> We're going to flash dance and run in place and whip our hair back. But oh, arms is really cool for that. And um, I haven't played Splatoon 2, but I'm imagining, you know, that you don't. Well, the, the motion. <laughs> Where are you going with this? The it's more of holding the console. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the motion control for is actually kind of cool because when you aim, you just move it around. Right. It makes it actually kind of easy so, to aim and shoot. It's just cool, the versatility, going back and forth, and even being able to hook it up to a TV and just sit on this open play. Right. So. Is it a baddie game? <clears throat> it's not. It's not a baddie game. Okay, I'll check it out. <laughs> you should check it out. It's, it, a lot of fun. it's fine. I, I appreciate the Switch and Nintendo overall having lots of good party games. So we still can't get rid of Mario, uh, no. Mario Kart at the meetups. It's just, oh, it's just so it's much there. fun. It's yeah. Mario Kart's so much fun. All right, so um, wanted to move into a couple of PC games that I'm excited about that I got to try. I don't think you guys will know as much about them as I do, Probably. but I know Charlie's played the Total War Warhammer tutorial. I've done the tutorial. <laughs> Somebody's. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm working a lot lately, so I haven't had a chance to actually dive headfirst into it. But what I had played impresses me, and I, I've never played a Total War game, but I, I love the Warhammer universe. I kind of wish it was Warhammer 40k, but it's fine. You know, you can't get everything you want. Yeah, I think I think they're building up to it. That was. Pleased to find out that there are actually a couple other gamers that are on Steam and have played Total War. We were all just separate. We didn't know that we all existed. So oh, wow. uh, connecting with a couple people, have invited them on Discord and stuff like that. So, but the Total War Warhammer by EA. It's um, the title just rolls off the tongue. So he's Total right. War Warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> um, really good game. They have an expansion coming out in uh, actually this coming month, August, August 10th. It's going to include the North Faction. And then um, mm. next month they're releasing a the whole... The North Remembers. Yeah, oh, tying into Game of Thrones The North there. Remembers. They're, they're releasing the, uh, another series, which is another part of the Total War universe. So they're planning to release three the sections Targaryens? of the game. No, we're the not... The Kings of the that. North! <laughs> but, so, uh, looking forward to that. Um, if you Why really is there no Total War Game of Thrones? Did, probably because oh, yeah, it's common. <laughs> probably because it's owned and they have to buy the rights. Just like they had to buy the rights for Warhammer. Are we going to talk about Game of Thrones? on the market now? Nobody plays Warhammer anymore. it. I'm obsessed with Game of Thrones. We want to talk about it. No, we so can. We, can talk about we, we would talk about it for ages. I'd go through all my different theories, and then everybody would click close on the video. So let's just keep going. <laughs> so uh, another game which is really great, which uh, some gamers are getting into. It's a mix between hack and slash and like Minecraft, mm -hmm. and it's called and zombie tower defense. It's called Fortnite. Um, it's it's a multiplayer game. Uh, basically, you have different classes with different abilities and things like that, and you have to build your base, and you encounter waves of zombies with different strategies and levels and things like that. Now, one thing that attracted me to Fortnite is not only the base building aspect, but the fact that it is a persistent base. It's not like, oh, you're in this mission, or this like these five missions are only going to have this base. It's a persistent base that just builds right. up over time based on what you scavenge. And you're building up your storm shield, right? That's the whole thing. About it's, got a really, it's got a really nice storyline. I mean, it does have some issues right now, but since it just came out uh, last week, we're hoping that the developers are going to fix some of the things that the community is talking about. But, beautiful game, mm -hmm. great gameplay, lots and lots of fun. Are you killing the husks? I'm killing the husks. Are you getting the loot? It, it's kind of got that comical feel like Borderlands had. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know... Well, the art style is what kind of attracted me. All the husks look like they they could easily wear their chin as a hood. Yes. It's just, it's just well, all well, the reason they call it husk is because it's, a, a, I guess it's a zombie inside of a human oh. skin. <laughs> like, the human head is the hood. It's really, I don't know. It sounds graphic. It's, it's graphic, a bit weird, yeah. But it's funny in a way. Just It's super it, cutesy art style, you know. <laughs> It's Borderlands. It's Borderlands. Oh, Borderlands. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But um, it, it's a good game. Lots of players are on it. We're just kind of waiting to see where the game is going to go. Because and it's going to be free to play in a year. They're talking oh, about wow. doing free to play right now. They did um, a founders release. Um, lots of people that are paying for the game now are helping. I guess set up the company for success later, and then eventually they're going to do free to play. So it, I mean, I have a feeling this is if, if anybody is interested. I think this would be the natural evolution of Left 4 Dead. Like, if you like Left 4 Dead, I think this game is actually the natural evolution of, of what that would have become mm -hmm. if they would have actually made a Left 4 Dead 3 and continued it. Yeah. At least that's how I feel. Yeah. The gameplay, not the art style and everything right. else, but the gameplay itself. They're hitting on a lot of things. Like, the building really does feel like Minecraft in a way. Mm -hmm. So I almost felt like it was more of a streamlined version of the building in Fallout 4. Like, because that felt clunky as hell, but this feels really smooth. Yeah, a little bit. It, it's, it's definitely a hodgepodge of mm -hmm. a bunch of different genres. But it, it's worth checking out now. But... 
we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's fun. A month from now, after the first update, it may not be fun anymore, but we'll see. Oh, oh, well. we, we hope for the best. I love the game right now. Though. I hope yeah. it's still fun. I know it, we have several gamers that are often on the Discord, killing the husks and getting the loots. And, and they have been working on the game for a while, so hopefully it's going to work out. We don't know. But it, it's right now, it's a great game. All right. And that's PC and Mac. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So cool. It's um, <clears throat> through a, a separate launch on Steam. <laughs> What's the company? I can't even think of it right I'm now. I'm sorry? Can't think of the company. Yeah, they're not hosting it through Steam or anything. You have to yeah. buy it directly from their portal. Oh. Yeah. All right, another game we want to talk about was Crash Bandicoot. Yes, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. If you haven't played Crash, this is your opportunity to play all three games that originally came out for the PS1 and also the PS2, I believe. You got both? me there. I know it was that generation. I'm pretty sure it was. It, it's definitely those two generations. Yeah, I don't know the actual timeline two. though. Right. Well, they went ahead and they, you know, remastered everything, all the levels, all the characters. Everything is brand new. I was gonna say this ties into the past couple of months where they've been just re-releasing old games, updating graphics right. and stuff like that. So Crash was always a really fun game to play. It really was. Uh, evidently, they say this game. This game is really, really difficult because uh, the character boxes. You know how in the old game they used to be like polygons. Now they're not. So it makes it really difficult to actually land in a safe spot. Oh, so it changes the game. Yeah, it changes the game quite a bit. You die a lot more easily now than you did before. It's actually kind of challenging. I'm really excited. I kind of want to buy it. I haven't bought it yet. I haven't played it. The only thing that... Uh, I was watching a Let's Play of it, I think, either on Twitch or YouTube. And I gotta say, and this is a weird thing, but the only thing that bothers me is that nowhere in the introduction, spla uh, excuse me, splash screens or loading screens or anywhere in the beginning does it say originally developed by Naughty Dog. Oh, it doesn't? So they didn't give them... Mm. Really? Mm -mm. I guess since they bought... They didn't put the logo. I don't know if Naughty Dog maybe didn't want their logo on it because yeah. they didn't know how it would turn out. Or if there was... There's a story there, for sure. But, but if you boot up the game, it does not acknowledge Naughty Dog anywhere. Maybe really? it is in the credits somewhere, but not in the beginning splash screens at all. That's crazy. It's a little nuts. Yeah. Does Naughty Dog not own Crash Bandicoot? No, they anymore? do. But... Well, that's what I'm saying. It, 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 there's a suspicious. story here somewhere, like it whether it was suspicious. licensed or whatever, but they are not mentioned anywhere in the splash screens or in the loading screen. Oh, wow. If anyone knows something about it, you should probably put it in the comments. It sounds, yeah, there's a, there's a story they're hiding somewhere. I mean, yeah. like I said, maybe it's in the credits, it'll be like special thanks to Naughty Dog or something, but they're at least. They pretty much just updated the graphics. I mean, it's the same spinning, it's, it's the same levels as far as I can tell. It's the same so, game. It's literally the same game. So it's a little interesting to me that they're not acknowledged. Maybe they didn't want to be since they've got such a, you know, a, a powerful brand now. Right. So who knows? Yeah. Mm, yeah, I guess you might have a point there. Who knows? I mean, they're all Nathan Drake and stuff now in Last of Us. And The Last of Us. Oh my gosh, The Last of Us 2. That was something else for me, 3. Yeah, it was, just, it was just a title screen though, right? No, you actually had... Like, oh, that's right. We saw what might be Joel standing next to an, an older Ellie. That's right. Yes, yeah, so and she's playing the guitar while bleeding. Yeah, we'll uh, see what happens with that. That's definitely going to be... I mean, that's going to be a life. week of my life gone when that comes out, <laughs> that's for sure. Right. Alright, so um, our next game is uh, something that was mentioned on the wall, which I haven't played, but I, I looked it up, is Dream Daddy. Mm. So I know Charlie has played a little bit of this game, you so what this. do you think, Charlie? Dream Daddy. Pass. Pass? Here, I mean, here's the thing, it's a, it's a dating simulator mm. about dads, and you're a dad too, and it's, I mean, it's, as it's far as dating simulators go, it's actually pretty tame. Anytime there's any sort of happy, fun time interactions, it just fades to black. Mm. And it's, I mean, it's uh, its a natural evolution of, you know, uh, choose your own adventure. It's one of those games where you just pick dialogue choices and responses. It's a hell of a lot of reading, so if you're not into that, don't play it. It's a very typical dating sim, which has become its own genre in the recent years. But like, it's, it's LGBT, or is there... It's whatever you want it to be. Let's uh -huh. put it that way. Like, it's, from what I, and I honestly was barely paying attention when I played this. As far as I can tell, it's undefined. Um, so you can make friends with all these daddies? So you can yeah, have daddies? You choose which one you want to pursue. You gotta go on like pretty much at least one date with all of them at some point as their introduction mm. and stuff like that. You know, there's the goth daddy, Damien. There's the lumberjack one. I even name. I played it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, but no, there's like the lumberjack one. There's the one that looks like he used to be a, a circuit queen for the most part. Like, there's whatever. It's a dating sim. If you like them, check it out. I think the price point's a little high for a dating sim, to be honest. Most of them are either free or like five bucks. I think this is 15, 20 bucks. Oh. It's a bit much. That's a little high. It's a little, yeah, high, it's a little for high for a dating high. sim. <laughs> Look, at that price point, you can get Danganronpa instead. Far superior in every conceivable way. Go check it out. Yeah. <laughs> So, so maybe when it's a little bit cheaper, it's worth put it on your wish out. list on Steam. Yeah, put, it, put it on your wish list on Steam. You know, Steam's got that great return policy now. As long as you played a game for less than two hours and you haven't owned it for fourteen days, you can request a refund. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I they're, they're good at, at so that. That's actually pretty cool. Because, yeah, it's because all the time when people get um, duped. 
Right, with the alpha game or something like that, and it's not what they were expecting. They'll, right. they'll return it. Yeah, so I mean, if you're really that curious, get it on Steam, check it out, play an hour, if it doesn't catch you, return it. I did want to, I guess, segue really quick. It's mm -hmm. interesting that Steam's getting rid of Greenlight, and that hopefully... Has gotten rid of it. Has gotten rid of it, and hopefully the duping isn't really going to happen anymore, because they're a lot more strict about... Yeah, but about now you just pay into it. Right, but they're not going to be releasing as many titles because the process to get on the market is going to be much harder. Well, we'll see. Instead of just developing a pilot game and then greenlighting it and hoping it gets votes and then put it into you know early access purchase is one thing, but now people can just pay anywhere from $1 to $500 to just get it put on the platform. It might ultimately lead to more shovelware. True. We'll see what happens long term. Yeah. When, when I think I, the green light program had the best of intentions and then just ultimately it, kind it of, became a shyster fest. Yeah. Mm. So, but it, it was cool to see a lot of independent people out there trying get to get their chance. Yeah. yeah. So I, don't I mean, know. there's a lot of great games we wouldn't have gotten without Steam Greenlight. Yeah. RimWorld being one of them. True. Oh yeah. I love that. Yeah, game. Yeah, Steam does a lot of things to test. Mm -hmm. I remember the one time they tried to make. Um, like not making Half Life Three. <laughs> well, that. But wow, when the. Wow. Um, well, actually, no. It wasn't Steam. It was the company that tried to make um, member-generated content cost. They were going to charge for it. Who was that? It wasn't Valve. I thought it was Valve. Was it? Yeah. They were going to charge for the workshop? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe I'm speaking out my ass. It may have just been for certain titles. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Yeah. So, Dream Daddy, interesting. Maybe try it out. Anything maybe. that has to do with Dream Daddies in the title just sounds like a pocket full of fun right there. Here's the thing about Dream Daddy, my final <laughs> word on it. I loved, I can't remember the goddamn name of the game now, the Pigeon Dating Simulator. Pigeon dating? Yes. Oh, why can't I think of the name though? It's like Hattori Hattori boyfriend or something. Hattori Hansen? No. Anyway, <laughs> it's a literally a pigeon dating simulator. You're a human, in a dating school pigeon. full of pigeons, and the th the twist is, and fast forward 45 seconds if you don't want to hear the big spoiler to this game, spoiler. is that this is a post-apocalyptic wasteland, and the pigeons have become ultra intelligent, like Planet of the Apes, that have taken over the world. <laughs> And they're, you're, you're like an envoy of humanity trying to reintroduce humanity to the world that is now run by pigeons. Like oh, ultra wow. hyper intelligent pigeons. Someone was high when they wrote this story. But it's actually a fascinating <laughs> game with a great. Okay, we're going to have to talk about this game in the next podcast. Okay. I'm going to try this one. It's, it's actually <laughs> fun. Like, but the thing is, unless Dream Daddy has like one of those, if you do things in a certain order, it reveals a whole second game, which is what happened in that pigeon oh, wow, dating really? simulator. Yes. Like, once you get the spoiler, like that we just talked about, hopefully you fast forward it to this point at this, but it's, a, it's an entirely separate game from that point. So maybe people just haven't discovered in Dream Daddy, it's like, oh, actually, it's about this. And it gets a little more in-depth, but right now, it's a very generic dating sim that just happens to be daddies, and it's caught people's attention. Yeah. Maybe yeah. there'll be an update. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Alright, next, this is a game I'm excited about, I just because it. of the publisher. It's uh, the people that made Bastion. And Transistor. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of people skipped Bastion, if you did. It's Question. go back and fucking get it. It's yeah. on sale on Steam right now. Yeah. So Pyre. Hmm? Language. language. Yeah, language girl. girl. Children uh, listening. This know. is mature, explicit <laughs> content podcast. You've been warned. This is I'm 17. All right. So Pyre is, is already out. It's and fantastic. Great reviews. Good game. Totally worth the purchase. It's very difficult to talk about without spoiling yeah, it. There's, there's something spoilers. that happens about mm -hmm. one third into the game that really changes things, and I'm not going to touch that because the game is far too new. Um, it, is, it really changes the game, but the easiest way to sell it, and it's almost impossible, is it is a sports fantasy RPG. <laughs> I know that sounds really batshit crazy, but it works really well. Yeah, hmm. and, and the gameplay and the graphics and everything, beautiful game. Mm -hmm. So, like, if we're checking off a list, Pyre, yeah. you would check all of them, because it's a really great And if, you, if game. you're desperate for something original, not only check out everything this company has done, because Bastion, you're never gonna, you haven't played anything like it, I promise you. Transistor, guarantee you've never played a game like that. The combat system, I still don't completely understand sometimes. But Pyre, again, this company is consistently original. They're creative, revolutionary, yeah. You, it, it is worth checking out. It's absolutely, it doesn't matter if you're like, oh, sports, oh, RPG, trust me, it somehow it's works, yeah. and it's fantastic. The art style, you know, the decisions you have to make, and again, the twist that changes the game considerably is really well done. We'll talk done. about it next time yeah. after it's people really have well to done. So, one out of ten that they should play it, what's your... Easily a nine, because I don't give anything ten. tens. Oh. Ten out of ten. It's, it's ten okay. out of ten? Just try it. I might even try it out. Is, that, is this on PC only? Uh, PS4 and PC, not Mac. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So okay. PS4, it's only, I think Steam is hosting this as well, yeah. so you can get it on Steam. And I noticed a lot of games, not talking about this one specifically, but I've noticed a lot of games are starting to go to like phones and iPads and stuff like that. They're making they're making that ability as well, so right. with the Switch 
jumping this year. I just wonder how much further it's going to go before they really make that leap to an all-in-one. Start making games. That are just portable? Yeah. Because hmm. I, I know this Steam games available on iPad, available on iPad, available on iPad. I'm like, mm -hmm. how do you play that game on iPad? It still doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, I think that's a thing Nintendo's trying to do. Yeah. Remember they had Mario Run and then Pokemon Go? And yeah, because Mario had... One, that really went over like, well. Well, three stages and ten dollars, please. I, I, I instantly paid ten dollars like, for that. A that perfect example: so Prison Architect. Yeah. That's on mobile now. Yes, I was like, that's how do you play yeah. that on mobile? They, they, they have a freaking um, <laughs> what's that, um, Fire Emblem game for the mobile as well. Now. I could see that though. And and you tap, 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 well, I mean, tap, tap. Yeah. Minecraft is on, even on iPad. To me, that's a yeah, hard game uh, to wrap my head around, having to sit there and move and build and right. Mm -mm. It's, yeah. And if an, iPad, if an iPad can run it. If it's a point and click game, I understand that, but actually controls and things like that and the buildings. I don't get it. But we'll see. I think, anyway, it's cool to see bridging the gap. Yeah. Although I, I don't play anything on iPad. <laughs> don't do anything yeah. with iPad. Now it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so our next game we want to talk about is Uncharted Lost Legacy. Nacho, this is all you, right? Yes. Have you all played Uncharted? Because I'm, I'm not played the, a I, dog How many are there now? Okay. Three. Okay, I think I played the first I'm one. I'm sorry? I, I thought there was a Four. You. Mm -mm. <laughs> How many Uncharted are there? Is there five? You're forgetting about Golden Abyss. I am Sabita. forgetting. Oh, but it's all you, Arturo. <laughs> Apparently it is. <clears throat> so I played the first one, I think. I, think. I played the one Uncharted. I don't know what it was. Yeah, because then <clears throat> the third one was the one in the desert. And the fourth one was the one that just came out. Mm -hmm. It was old. So this is the and fifth one? And then this one? is the fifth one. Okay. It's, is it really a fifth one? It's more like... It's more like a, a, it's more a like side, side chapter. Because the Nathan Drake story is done. It is over. Yes. Which I think the daughter might end up. Of course, that's over. what they were alluding to. Yeah. Oh wait, that's a spoiler. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the lost legacy, which is about the daughter. No, no, no. This is about two different characters that have been introduced throughout the entire franchise. Yes. Okay. Teaming up together for this adventure. Yes. And it is a little more open world than the other Uncharted games, um, because they've all been sort of corridor runners for the most part. And here and there, you know, like the market in uh, Madagascar in Uncharted Four is a little open. Right. Uh, Oh man, what was the name of the pirate town they discovered in Fork? Liber. Oh. It was an L or something, right? Anyway, that was a little more open. Like, you could traverse it as you wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, you could figure out to get around the bad guys however you wanted. Apparently, this is, they are calling it the most open world thing they've done yet. Oh, wow. So, we'll see what happens. Place. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not <clears throat> talking Breath of the Wild open world here, because right. these tend to be very realistic worlds, so it's going to be a huge human population, foliage, wherever the, whatever they're doing with it. So, this is PlayStation? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 These are always this PlayStation is, exclusives. Yeah, this is Naughty Dog. Right. So it'll be good. I, Naughty Dog is a third party. I mean, a second party studio. They're owned by Sony, right? Yes. I think so. So yes. it's always going to be PlayStation. It's always going to be PlayStation, whatever they make. And yeah, anything they make, it's like anything they touch. They know what they're doing. Gold. They know what they're doing. They're not about. You can just guarantee this game is going to be a nine or a ten. Period. Yep. That's good. Don't sleep on it. And it comes out this month, right? In August, I believe. So catch it at the end of the month. Yeah, yeah. I think it does come out. Yeah. Okay. That's the end of the month then. And uh, this was at e this was at E3. That was at E3. Yes. yes. So Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle looks cute. It looks super cute. And the rabbits are always a fun games, so that they're combining it with the uh, Mario characters. Yes. I like how they turn the rabbits into Mario characters, like, like the, the version, like the princess. And right. so I was like, this looks hilarious. Right. So. Now let's be honest about what this game really is. <laughs> It's Baby's First XCOM. Yeah. Which, I've never played XCOM. Well then, there you go. It Baby's is. First XCOM. So this is like, right in my alley, I guess you could say. Yeah, no, it's, it's a turn-based tactical... Fighter? Battler? Shooter? Not really a shooter, necessarily, no. Because it's, iso it's isometric view, grid-based, cover-based, ability-based, you know, all turn-based tactics, yada, yada, yada. It's like, look up a video of XCOM and then turn it into cute Nintendo characters. That's what this game is. So it's like, um... Final Fantasy Taxi, Taxi, Taxi in a way? In a way, yeah. Is okay. this the game also where they said it, it's going to have some type of Mario Party type feature? Did I? I, I thought I read that somewhere. It's Nintendo. I don't pay attention when yeah, they talk. Yeah, it might. Um, but <laughs> regardless, it's going to be a good I game. I hear your words, sir. It's going to be a, co a cool game. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be cute. I'm shocked that Nintendo is playing so nice with... Uh, Oh, who is it that owns the Rabbit property? Oh, no. Rayman it's Company. Right? It's Ubisoft. Okay. Yeah. So it's, I'm surprised that Nintendo and Ubisoft are actually made a game together. Right? <laughs> it is It is awkward pairing. When you first so saw it, you were like, what? Yeah, so I don't know. Because the only thing you remember about that, I mean, I know the Rabbits had a game on Wii, because I remember the damn commercials on every 10 minutes. Right. Like, <laughs> fucking screaming rabbits all over the place. And they were cute commercials, but... This came out of left field. It is. Nobody yeah. saw this Nobody coming saw at all. Coming. But it's cute. It's going to be fun. Well, and all I can say is everybody left E3 really happy that this wasn't the Mario game coming to Switch. Right, right, right. <laughs> Thank oh, God for Mario Odyssey. Odyssey. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That game this is, is like an extra amazing. Bonus. Yeah, this is an extra bonus. 
Mario Odyssey is going to be amazing. This is an extra something already. Right. And another Mario yeah. thing to mention real quick at Handhelds on Monday, we're going to have Mario Monopoly. Ooh. Which is it not. It's called Monopoly Gamer. Monopoly Gamer. Yeah, it's Mario Monopoly. It's called Monopoly Gamer. It's called Monopoly Gamer. <laughs> it's Mario <laughs> and, Monopoly. Mo and Monopoly. But it's not the Monopoly in the traditional sense because no, there's a bunch of added. Yeah, it has a limited number of rounds. Uh, there's boss battles. It's some oh. it got some interesting mm -hmm. additional features, so, so we're going to try it out Monopoly Monday. at all. It's Monopoly in the way that you it's have property, property based and cash, yeah. but yeah. But like, you they're know, switching it up. There's two dice. There's one dice that's your traditional it's die traditional. of, you know, one through six, and that's how many spaces you move, and then the other die is a special ability die. Mm. And each character, because each little token is, a you know, a character from the Mario universe, and they each have two different special abilities. Like, let's say, um, I think it's Donkey Kong. If he rolls a POW block, like, remember the big POW blocks? Right. Then everybody on the game board, I think, has to drop two coins. Just oh, where they are on the game board, you put two, to two coins so out of your like pocket. Live Mario Party. Kinda, yeah. Uh, and like fun. each boss battle is completely based. You have to pay to fight it first. So the person who passes go flips a boss card over, and it's one of the Koopa kids leading up to Bowser. Like Bowser's oh, the last boss. You pay a coin to fight him, and like the first one is roll a two or higher, and you win. If you don't, then the next player has an option: Do you want to pay to fight this boss? And the whole game goes on and on. And property, boss kills or defeats. I guess it's Nintendo. You don't want to say kills. Uh, coins count for points, properties count for points, and boss defeats count for points, and when all eight rounds are over and Bowser is either defeated or everybody passes, then you just accumulate all the points, and that's it. whoever wins, that's it. So oh. it's, it's very quick, yeah, it's, it's very great. quick, yeah. It's a nice reinvention of Monopoly, because nobody plays Monopoly really anymore, it's, it's too long. It's a long You don't game. make friends, it's a friend killer. Yeah, so this is a fresh take, and it's Monopoly, and right. people are going to enjoy it. Speaking of Monopoly, did you see Monopoly for the Switch? I did not, but not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> the Switch has, yes. just has everything now. I mean, it's so much fun because like, you don't have to actually have money because everything is stored for each character. When they said they were going to have... Super lazy. When it's they like said perfect they were going to have Skyrim for the Switch, I was just like, well, <laughs> there what goes else? the kitchen sink because that's like everything. Right Do the Joy-Cons have motion controls? I would yeah. assume, So yeah. can you like Skyrim to swing your sword? Like, Probably. Swing, yeah. And magic and just go... I don't know if they've done that. Buzz Rota! <laughs> Well, I'm more concerned like at the bow and stuff like that. You actually draw it. Like, <laughs> but yeah, they would, they would have done that in Breath of the Wild. So Monopoly Gamer well, they, will be fun. They have a, a version of it, so you just have to do this. Do, do the <laughs> yeah, little trigger because that's exactly aim. like a bow and arrow. Just do, two, <laughs> do the trigger, but then you aim like like this, and then oh, you, you shoot. <laughs> Nintendo, bless your heart. All right. Kidding. Yes, bless their hearts, <laughs> literally. So talking about uh, Overwatch, just for a bit, we wanted to talk about the new hero. Doom Taint. There you go. Doomfist. Doom uh, Doom Doomfist. Fist. Different body part. <laughs> Different body part. Okay. So what, what is Doomfist special for... I don't play Overwatch. He's a completely front-loaded damage dealer that has no hit points for being the leader of talent. So he's a glass cannon? He is, he is a he's the melee villain. glass cannon for the most part. Right. I mean, he's he has ranged attack, but... He goes like in four shots. He's like that guy from Grinder. I mean, he goes in and he unloads <laughs> in like less than three seconds, and he's done. He Wasn't that what everybody out. wants? <laughs> you're in. You're done. Pump, pump but the thing is, he's like he is the leader of talent. You were expecting someone who could take a hit. You know that, that introduction video where he's like, "Ha, Tracer, fuck you, ha, ha. Winston, fuck you, ha." ha. No, he, he charges in, he's like, ah, charge up, slam down, pew, 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 I'm dead. So Leroy Jenkins and... He needs Zarya, he needs a Zenyatta, he needs something to stay alive. So... But that balances him. It does To be honest, him, that balances really him. really strong. But he doesn't fit the fantasy, you know what I mean? Like, the, the leader of talent, you're expecting, you know, doom fit... But I guess that's why they made him half naked. He's got no armor. <laughs> he does. You know? <laughs> All he has is a massive armor. I feel like Reinhardt just walks up, he's like, I'm escorting the payload, God! He should go fly. Like, he's got nothing. Right. But, again, that's... He has to, because he, he is completely front-loaded burst damage. He needs to be squish. Yeah. But he feels like Tracer with bulk. So I know pretty much. There's a lot now. He's got no escape. They just, added, <laughs> they just added a couple of heroes in May, right? So this is... One hero. Osi Orisa. 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 Which nobody talks okay. about. I love Orisa. I mean, you see her in a lot of pro matches lately, I've noticed, but I never see her in-game. I think people just don't Orisa? know how to play her oh, with her. No, she's really cool. Like, you just drop off a sheet. Well, it's a 14-year-old girl controlling a mech, right? That's the whole thing. Not, not Orisa. She was like, no, Orisa's the mech. But yeah, but she's she's only a mech. But they were actually like health mechs that they would send out to to heal. Mm -hmm. But then this girl took. But that's what I mean. It's a fourteen-year-old girl controlling her. a mech. No, just reprogrammed it. It's oh. actually an AI. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I got my lore wrong. Right. Well, what lore? It's just like the lore for that game is like barely don't, existent. Don't. Don't. Huge Blizzard lore fan. We'll get into this later. It's like barely existent. I wish they just so, had a story mode. Yeah. So mode. That's the try out Doom Fist. Doom yes, try out Doom Fist. Make sure when you use his <clears throat> charge up attack, you hit someone into a wall because then that's like instant kill. Mm. Yeah. But it's good to see people still playing Overwatch and 
Man, that's not going anywhere for a yeah, long time. No. It's biggest eSport well, in South Korea already. Well, yeah, right? we need to do Seriously. hopefully do something special with it after people play it more, I guess. Where, um, you, where are you going with the sentence? Well, wait, I, a <laughs> tournament or some type of social event. Like we if always. Only we had an eSports manager in Houston Gamers. I, that's what I'm looking at you, Charlie. Looking at you, girl. I know. I'm slacking. All right, Come to so, Beach Day. Come to Beach Day. <laughs> well, oh, by the time you see this, yeah. it's already happened. <laughs> it's already Why been. weren't you at Beach Day? <laughs> Hope it was amazing. Beach there you go. All right, so our last game coming out at the end of the month is the new XCOM. War of the Chosen. And it's not a new XCOM, it's a new XCOM expansion. It's the new XCOM expansion. And it adds a whole lot of content and stuff. How much? More content. <laughs> we don't know that much about This yet. much? <laughs> like, All the much. Like two more characters, <laughs> more it's maps. Character. It, yeah, it's got more weapons. It's, the whole thing is it's like the aliens that have been trying to find genetic perfections Are and all this stuff. This game? Yes, XCOM is about. I don't know throw. I don't know nothing The very first, the very first XCOM about. game is when aliens invaded Earth and they spent in, sent in the special tactical team to. Named XCOM. Named XCOM. Oh. <laughs> so this is like, it, the story's just been a continuation. In XCOM 2, the aliens have won and have completely taken over Earth and it's about fighting for the resistance to get them the fuck out. So this um. is just continuing that story. It's another part chapter. Yeah, and the War of the Chosen is apparently adds just different persistent enemies that will come through the game, like actual commander characters that are enemy commander characters that will come in, mess up your day, leave. I mean, it's I, I honestly have not read much on it because I'm an XCOM fanboy. It, it's going to be day one purchase for me, so I'm just game. trying to go into it as blind as possible. That's nice. I see the little pictures that come out like, oh, featuring this faction, this new faction, this new faction. So I know there's at least three new things coming into the game, which of course are going to come with their own mission load, their own maps, new technology that you can you know adapt for your own team. Okay. So, I'm excited. Everything good XCOM is fantastic. The franchise is a must-play as long as you're not just someone who can only play many games. Yeah. Because they're extremely difficult. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's unique with the flexibility. I like the turn-based combat. Mm -hmm. So, they do a really good job with the storyline and tying that into what... Yeah, it's a combination, it's a combination of not only tactical combat with a limited team, limited resources, and permadeath. So, you can level somebody Whoa. up, max them out, they, they die, die, they're dead. Gone. Um, but also between missions there's base building and resource management because you, and you cannot max everything out until the very end game you can try to buy as much time as possible but aliens are attacking you know France and you know let's say Zimbabwe at the same time you can only save one of them and whoever you don't save they're gonna be pissed at you and stop supporting you you know that government's gonna pull out of the XCOM project so it's this constant balancing act of you know and you also got to protect your own base on top of everything else so where do you upgrade it's it's, it's a fantastic franchise and it's it's, it's got infinite replay value as far as I'm concerned. Because you can always do something else. And you can always name your, your soldiers after special people in your life. Yeah. It's be like, oh, brother, you died today. You were, you were blown up by a plasma rifle Aww. from a grunt. Yeah. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, lots of good titles coming out this month. Yes. Thank you. It's not like we haven't had enough to play over the summer. Right. So Don't forget to check our events tab on the page, because we have a lot of new special events coming over the next few months. You really don't want to check them out. Something's really special in the works that I think y'all will enjoy. I'm Charlie. Secret. <laughs> I'm Arturo. It's talking about our upcoming events. Yes, this is our events coordinator now for the group. So we're planning a lot of social things. So hopefully... Oh, you... Also the Good and Evil Drag Show coming in October. Yeah. All these fantastic Lots things Lots of social things. Um, gamer events. The group's expanding. We're going to be doing some charity work around nice. the holidays, which we haven't mm -hmm. really focused too heavily on before. So Extra Life is our staple. We'll be doing that again. So just check out our events. Yes. Did you guys it, say goodbye? Is that why y'all were saying your names? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is Charlie, Arturo, I'm Penny. Mama Penny. Mama Penny. Big Mama Penny. I don't know what that means. Big oh, Mama God. Penny. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.